What the heck is up? Oh, y'all, y'all, yeah. Oh, I'm just getting warmed up. Hey, are you the kind of mixing engineer who is afraid to commit? Like, do you have a song that you've been mixing right now, but you just haven't finished it for weeks? Oh no, wait, wait, this one's worse. Do you have a hard drive full of unfinished mixes? Come on, man, what are you doing? Bruh. Keep watching because I'm gonna give you the motivation you need to not only get that mix done, but the accountability that you need to keep going and to finish mix after mix after mix. Hey there, my name is Joey Sturgis, and I've spent the last 15 years of my life getting great at audio production. But enough about me, this is about you. Yes, you. You love audio and music production, and guess what, I've got good news for for you. You're in the right place because my job is to literally help you crush it at recording and mixing. So welcome, have a seat, stay a while, because I'm about to pump some badass knowledge into your brain. Let's go. Let's think about it. A mix is literally just one WAV file or one MP3. It's one song. It's not the end of the world. It's just one song. You can totally do it. Just one song. Come on. One song is, a, you know, it's not a ton of work. I know it represents your talent and your skill and your creativity. And so, you know, sometimes you set the bar really high because of that. But the reality is it's just one small three to four minute window into your work. Do you know how many songs that I've worked on? I've worked on over 1,000 songs. It's over 9,000! So a few isn't going to be a big deal for you. I know that you can do them. Just open them up, make your moves, and get them exported. The quicker you let people hear them, the faster you can get to the suggestions and the adjustments that you really feel you should make. And that's going to set you up for learning from your mistakes. Remember, the faster you can learn from your mistakes, the closer you can get to becoming a great mixer. Most mixes are made up of only a dozen or less actual elements that are taking up space. And 90% of what you need to do is get the EQ and compression right. EQ and compression is going to create the biggest impact on your mix. So you don't really need to worry too much about how great you are at mixing. All you have to be able to do is boost the treble when it's too dark or turn the treble down when it's too bright or add some mid range when it sounds like it's too scooped. Turn on the compressor when the volume levels move around too much and you're literally like 75% better than most mixers online. This is totally achievable for anyone out there that's trying to do this for the first time. And I don't wanna hear any excuses. Just diagnose the sound, figure out what's missing, fix it by adding a little bit of EQ or compression and then compare it to the original. If it doesn't sound like an alien made it, you're ready to to keep going and if it does sound like an alien made it well <laughs> i don't know if i can help you just kidding go, go back, back to your planet. planet the longer you let that unfinished mix sit on your hard drive the longer it'll take for you to make actual progress you don't actually make progress until you let the world hear it. Simply the process of getting it done and putting it out to the world is what moves you forward because you learn from your mistakes, like I said earlier. You actually become a better engineer by making mistakes in front of everyone. Doing that teaches you a lesson. This is exactly how I learned to get great at mixing because my mixes suck, but they sucked in front of the whole world. And so I got embarrassed by that and I made changes to how I worked to reflect a better product. Over time, I got better. One song can only teach you so much about mixing. You can sit there and EQ the same guitar sound over and over again until it sounds perfect. But when a new guitar sound comes along or you need to do something you've never encountered before, you're going to be back to where you started. So you really just need to get tons and tons of material under your belt and it rounds you out and makes you better. It allows you to really get ahead with how you understand not only the instruments that you're working with, but more so the tools that you're using to do this stuff. And the better you understand those tools, the better you'll become with them. And that's what's going to make you a total rock star at mixing. Anyway, this is just what I think. But there is always something more interesting and that is what you think. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe and follow to see more. Do you want to learn more about my audio production process? You're in luck because I've teamed up with Creative Live to give you my exact methods for audio production step by step in what we call the Studio Pass. This class is packed with everything you need to craft audio productions like mine. Click the link on this video to enroll now. I will be compensated when you make a purchase. I'm also gonna make a special offer. If you purchase the class, send me your receipt to support at joeysturgistones.com and you'll get a free JST plugin up to $49 in value. How awesome is that? Click the link on this video and grab my Studio Pass class with Creative Live. Now stick around tomorrow because I'm going to be talking about what producers should know about my audio production methods. That's all for now. Talk to you tomorrow. Happy mixing.